All right. I want to start off with this scripture, in Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's what we're dealing with right now, the curse. I'm talking about fatherlessness, absent fathers. Now, everything we talked about today, the root cause is absent fathers, missing fathers. Elizabeth talked about human trafficking, went to her father. He was an alcoholic. When we talk about poverty, we talk about incarceration. When we talk about mental health, public health, public safety, fatherlessness is the most destructive trend of our society. I run a program called Man to Man, Urban Youth Advocate. The mission of Man to Man, Urban Youth Advocate is simple. We are a nonprofit deeply committed to breaking the cycle of father absence of our families of color in the San Francisco Bay Area and all fathers. But there's a different thing that's going on with people of color than just the regular population. By providing the culturally relevant knowledge, skills, resources, and support for young men and fathers to thrive, the program provides an array of life skills that enhances the emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual development. The summation of these goals provides our clients the ability to position and reposition themselves as leaders of their families and communities. So I work been going to San Quentin State Prison for 28 years. I started in 1995 as my friend has said, started playing basketball against the inmates. And then at halftime, we have a mini sermon. And we break it, and then we go back and we play again. And after the game, then we fellowship. I started my uh, man to man at Ohlone College. A woman called me and said, hey, there are some young men that's playing basketball. They're all over the country. They're from Philadelphia. They're from Chicago. They're from Africa, and they're not graduating. And I was wondering if you would be willing to work and mentor them. And so here's the crazy thing. At that day that I was going to Ohlone College, I was homeless. My car was full of clothes. I had just left the house. My wife and I had departed. Two years before that, I had built a $2 million house in San Jose from the ground up. So my point here is that we're all one paycheck away from being homeless. Don't you ever say that won't happen to me, because when you say that, it will be you. I started my street ministry, which is crazy doing homelessness in San Jose. For 13 years, I went under the bridges, freeways, in remote areas, in places that you've driven by and never knew anybody even lived in those trees. Preaching the gospel every Saturday morning while they're drinking 40 ounces and smoking weed. And I didn't say put it out, I just kept preaching. Hey, Stuart, you coming back next Saturday? I'll be here. And I'm bringing clothes. I'm bringing Bibles. Sometimes I would go to St. James Park. This is where I started my ministry, at a podium. And wherever I opened up the Bible was where I preached. And they said, man, I'm going to eat. And I said, well, before you eat, let me feed you spiritually. Because I already knew if I fed them, they would leave. And we saw signs and wonders and miracles. That, that opened up the opportunity for me to work with men. That opened the opportunity to let me know the gift that I had before I went to San Quentin. And so San Quentin was started with basketball, but then I was an advisor for the San Quentin prison, the, the, the newspaper. And then I began to run our programs and several programs. I took over the Allen Temple domestic violence class, which is a 52-week mandated to go to this class 
in the killing zone of East Oakland. Let me explain what that means. That's where all the murders are committed in East Oakland, the majority of the murders. So I started my uh, dissertation. It's called, well, I started my thesis. And I was talking about working with uh, disadvantaged young men in urban communities. And I went back to the 1940s when Oakland was a thriving community. And I was trying to figure out how did they have all this diversion, uh, diversity and all of the things that was going on. But then in my high school year, my senior year, it's the murder capital. So then after that, I began to write my dissertation. Because at first I thought it was the young men. But I find out when I started writing my dissertation, the young men was just a byproduct of the issue. The root cause was fatherlessness in every country. So there's a path to homelessness for families. Paths to homelessness, I work two jobs and I live in my car. I had a bad accident, no health insurance. I lost my job and have to choose rent or food. Landlord raised rent, couldn't keep up, got evicted. Family homelessness. The U.S. has the largest number of homeless women and children among industrialized nations. Not since the Great Depression have so many families been without homelessness. Homelessness families comprise roughly a 34% of total U.S. homeless population. Got to fast forward. So here's 90% of homeless and runaways. The here says, dads are important children growing up without a father face greater risk of account for 90% of homeless and runaway youth, 71% of high school dropouts, 63, 63% of youth suicide. Let's get the fathers back into their positions. I got to move forward. Just run this real quick. These are some men that I uh, interviewed. It's from San Quentin State Prison. I, I did a, I'm working on a fatherhood documentary. And these men are going to tell you about fatherlessness and how it made their decisions that got them incarcerated. Father gives identity to his son by the passion that's inside of him. If not, one of the neighborhood hood dudes could be a role model. The streets have a way of marking you. I was a drug dealer. I was an absentee father. I'm charged with manslaughter for the killing of my stepfather. And I want to tell parents today that we have to be able to communicate with our kids. It's been 2,559 days since the death of Trayvon. I'm Trayvon Martin's father, of course, but I'm your father, too. The conversation may not always be comfortable, but if it's necessary, then we should have it. And if, if you really love your children, then you'll realize that it shouldn't be a one-sided conversation. That's one of the greatest things my dad could have dealt with me was let me, let me grow. Playing the drums can be loud. He never said stop playing drums. My dad let me play. I make a point to be at every one of my son's games. I don't care what's going on. I put him on the calendar just like anything else. One of the biggest gifts that a father can give to his son is the gift of his presence. I didn't realize that having a father in your life was a special thing. You would go to school and people didn't know who their fathers were. And I would think, what? Everybody knows who their dad is, so you're just saying that. But the reality was some people did not know his father you know, didn't come pick him up to go to a baseball game. He sat outside and his grandmother um, told him to come inside. If your dad's not coming, so I'm going to wait. So I waited till nighttime and my dad never came. You know, how, what do you say to a son that you've abandoned for 20 minutes? What do you say? If you're not sincere, the boy will know it. Don't make a promise and not keep it. This is my baby, you know? This is my, my one of my oldest kids that I raised, and I feel like I let him down. I felt like a bad dad. When you parent someone, the mother doesn't do herself. Those people who were born, they're your blood. No one impacted my life like my father. Our children are always watching us. The father has the biggest influence on his children. So. A father's handprint is his thinking, his characteristics, his principles for life. And the children have to be wrapped in that handprint. They have to feel and experience their father's love and attention and direction. And without it, chaos.
Thank you.